Hello, my name is Kareem Khalifa, and today's topic is atomic sentences. Here's my plan of attack for today. First, I'm going to tell you why atomic sentences matter for the larger aims of the course. Then we'll look at the basic building blocks of atomic sentences, which are individual constants and predicates. Finally, we'll piece it all together and talk about the basic mechanics of atomic sentences, the do's and don'ts in terms of how you write them in first order logic. Now you might have asked yourself, why are we doing this? I'm going to provide you with two reasons for why this matters. First, these are just building blocks. In the future, we'll perform more complicated operations on these atomic sentences. That will greatly facilitate and broaden the kinds of arguments that we can evaluate. Second, by working with a more precise language, first order logic, you'll become more attuned to ambiguities in English. This is going to help you to become a better writer and reader in English. Atomic sentences in first order logic have two main ingredients, individual constants and predicates. Let's talk about individual constants first. These are symbols used to refer to some fixed individual object. As a first approximation, not a perfect approximation, mind you, they function a lot like proper names in English. The individual objects to which individual constants refer can be quite varied. For instance, they might refer to people, like me. Unlike English, we don't capitalize names in first order logic. So, you see that I write my name in first order logic with a lowercase k. Nor are individual constants restricted to the names of people. They might refer to animals, such as my dog Frida. Or places, like Middlebury College. Or even weird things like tetrahedron A, as you'll see in your homework. There are, however, important differences between proper names in English versus individual constants in first order logic. Specifically, you can only assign one object per name in first order logic. That's not true of English in general. Let me give you an example. As many of you may know, I share a last name with a famous rapper, Wiz Khalifa. So in English, it's perfectly okay to refer to both of us as Khalifa. In first order logic, that's not okay. We're trying to minimize ambiguity, and so we'd want to know whether we're referring to famous rapper from Pittsburgh or the really handsome logic professor. So in first order logic, we're going to need at least two names to keep tabs on these different individuals. We might use, for instance, Prof Khalifa and Wiz Khalifa. You don't have to use those two names in particular, but you just need two distinct names. So the proceeding shows why multiple objects may not share a name. However, the converse is not true. In other words, one object may have multiple names. Let me give you an example. You guys might call me Professor Khalifa. However, I go by other names, believe it or not. For instance, my friends and colleagues are on a first name basis with me, so they call me Kareem. That would be another name. This is acceptable according to first order logic that I can have two names. They refer to the same object, me. Okay, so remember that there are two ingredients to an atomic sentence. There's the individual constant and there's the predicate. We'll talk about predicates now. I'm going to break up the discussion into three parts. First, I'm just going to give you some examples. Then we'll talk about a term of art called the argument of a predicate. And finally, we'll talk about the arity of a predicate. Roughly speaking, a predicate is what happens when you take all of the individual constants out of a sentence. Right? It's what's left over as a result. So let's take a look at these three sentences and pull out the predicate from each of them. So in the first sentence, Frida is a dog, quite clearly Frida is an individual constant. We pull that out and the predicate is therefore is a dog. We turn to the second sentence, Professor Khalifa teaches at Middlebury, and we know that both Professor Khalifa and Middlebury are individual constants, so we yank those out and what's left over is the predicate teaches at. Finally, let's look at a new example uh, for the discussion. Baron is the son of Donald and Melania. Right, so Baron, Donald, and Melania are all names of individual objects. We pull those out and we end up with is the son of blank and blank. Note that first order logic has a slightly narrower definition of what a predicate is than we do in English. So in English, Middlebury would be part of the predicate in the second sentence. Similarly, Donald and Melania would be part of the predicate in the third sentence. 
By contrast, when we look at first order logic, we see that the predicate has no reference to any individual constants at all. So in the second case, teaches that is the predicate. And in the third case, is the son of blank and blank uh, is the predicate. Okay, let's talk about how you'll write this down in first order logic. In English, you start with the subject and follow with the predicate. That's reversed in first order logic. You start with the predicate and then you put in the individual constants. So in the right hand column, you'll now see what these sentences look like in their full glory when they're put into first order logic. Let's talk through these things a bit. The highlighted words are all individual constants. These are called the arguments of the predicate. Thus, Frida is an argument of the predicate dog. Professor Khalifa and Middlebury are arguments of the predicate teaches at, and Baron, Donald, and Melania are arguments of the predicate son. Note that each example has a different number of blanks associated with it. Dog has one blank associated with it, teaches at has two blanks associated with it, and son has three blanks associated with it. The number of blanks is what's called the arity of the predicate. Basically, the arity tells you the number of individual constants you need to plug in in order to convert the predicate into a well-formed sentence. Okay, let's wrap up our discussion by talking about the basic mechanics of atomic sentences. Order matters quite a bit in first order logic. Let's look at what happens when we flip the orders of some of these things. These are different mistakes that I've seen people make throughout the years, and I want to show you what each of these things in the rightmost column in red means. We'll talk through them one by one. So you might be tempted to write things as they are in the right-hand corner because that mimics the order in English, but that's ungrammatical. That would be like Yoda speak. That would be like, dog Frida is. Note that the sentence, open parentheses, Frida dog, is simply ungrammatical in first order logic. By contrast, our other example, teaches at, open parentheses, Middlebury, comma, Prof Khalifa, close parentheses, is grammatical but nonsensical. What it says in English is Middlebury teaches at Professor Khalifa. I don't know what that means. It sounds painful. So the last example is different from the previous two in that it's both grammatical and sensical. What it says is that Donald is the son of Melania and Baron. Okay. The problem isn't that we don't understand what that means. We just recognize that it's false. Okay, so let's sum up the big take-home lessons. First, atomic sentences are made up of individual constants and predicates. Second, Individual constants pick out individual objects. Predicates describe those objects' properties and their relationships to other objects. Third, a single name cannot pick out multiple objects, but a single object can have multiple names. Fourth and finally, atomic sentences in first order logic have a very precise order. Ignoring this order frequently results in ungrammatical, nonsensical, or false sentences. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next lesson.